And yes. yes. Okay. Excellent. All right. Maybe pizza for dinner. Yes, maybe pizza for dinner, Diana. Welcome everybody. Just uh, watching some attendees flowing in here. So uh, welcome, welcome. Diana, we're just talking about what we were making for dinner, what I made for dinner um in typical italian fashion i made some uh, homemade pizza so that was on the that was on the menu tonight mm -hmm. so uh diana thank you uh no seeing a lot of people streaming in here Excellent. hope everybody is um is enjoying this weather the final days of march it's getting uh one day close to april that's my that was my mantra back in in december when we had a nice day so uh we're we're one sleep closer to April and hopefully by then we'll have some better weather. Finally. All right. <clears throat> Welcome everybody. Seen some familiar names from uh from seven hours past. And thank you again for, for joining us and, and your um your dedication to these webinars. We 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 really enjoy doing them. Uh it's uh it's been a it's been a fantastic series and thanks to uh thanks to diana who actually did our last webinar that was on that was glad right yeah glad and um osteoarthritis osteoarthritis yeah yes. yeah so uh these are great webinars uh always take something away from them and um it's a great way for our clinicians to uh showcase their talents we've uh we've, we've done a lot in the community uh, over the last couple of years and this actually started this is kind of an anniversary. Uh, when when COVID started, we started doing these. I think I know it was right yes. at the beginning of COVID. It was yeah. it was something for us to to stay connected with um, with the community. It's been a couple of years now we've been doing. Mm -hmm. it. And everyone's had really good feedback too about the webinars. So I think that's really yeah. important. Yeah, it's been great. Um, so we're just going to wait a couple more minutes here. I really appreciate everybody for uh, started. Uh, Thank you, Jackie. Uh, I saw that typed in the chat. I really appreciate the feedback. Um, reaching as far out as Stouffville, uh, now as far north as uh, as uh, Bradford, and mm -hmm. um, great community up in Bradford. We've, uh, we we started there in Bradford in September, and uh, really enjoying. And uh, of course, the original, my one and only Nobleton. Uh, thanks to all the the Nobleton. Uh, uh, participants tonight uh it was eight, 18 years ago that uh nobleton was started off so anyway enough about that enough about me we will start um with our webinar so thank you for all the attendees i will uh, allow people to to join as uh, as more people probably finishing up their dinner or um you know pouring a glass of wine so i will turn the floor over to diana uh just one more question here. Thanks for the gift of, the gift of education. Thank you so much, uh, Patty. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so tonight brought to you by Diana Alonzi is the Osteoporosis Survival Guide to Moving Better. And so uh, without further ado, uh, actually, maybe we'll uh, just go a little housekeeping item here. Thank you so much. Uh, please, a couple of you have already done this. Uh, type into the chat any any questions you, you have. If it's a burning question that can't wait to the end, please ask them as we're going through. Raise your hand, type into the chat, um, what, whatever you feel uh, is necessary to, to get my attention and um, or just tell me to be quiet and I will. Okay, I'm going to turn this over to Diana because you guys are uh, patiently waiting here. So thank you very much. And the uh, floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Giacomo. Um, so as Giacomo mentioned, my name is Diana. I am a registered kinesiologist here at the clinic. I went to York University and graduated a few years ago. Um, upon graduation, I became a licensed kinesiologist and I primarily, I have a number of hats at the clinic, but um, primarily my role is in um, exercise therapy and bracing and working with patients with chronic diseases. Um, I'm also the OsteoPro program director and I've also created the OsteoPro program, which you will hear more about um, later on in the webinar, so make sure you stay tuned. Um, and of course, um, Giacomo, our uh, clinic director. So that's who we are and uh, we'll get started. So today's agenda, what is osteoporosis? Common signs and symptoms of osteoporosis. What are the current treatment options available for osteoporosis? Um, what is the OsteoPro program and how it can benefit yourself? 
Uh, we'll do a live Q&A after all of this and then uh, our giveaway. So stay tuned. We have a great giveaway this evening. So please make sure that you uh, stay tuned for that. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna get started with some questions. Um, so we just kind of want to get a demographic of our group here this evening. So feel free to answer the poll questions that will come up on the screen. Uh, bear with me here. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay. Hope you guys can see that. Uh, can you see that there, Diana? Yeah, I think um, this is the results. Um, oh, there we go. Sorry. All right. There we go. Sorry about that. So take a few minutes here to just fill this out. Um, that way we can get a better understanding of our demographic here this evening. Perfect. And whenever you see most of them come in, Jack mm -hmm. all. Okay, so I'm starting to see some uh, some results here. We got uh, we're almost almost done. Thank you. Okay, so we're just going to end the poll here. Oh, a couple more people answering. We'll go ahead and, and end the poll and uh, share some results. So share the results. Here we go. Okay, so big group there between the 56 to 65 age range. That's great. Um, okay, lots of people have been diagnosed with osteoporosis already. That's on the poll. That's even better. Can you see that third question there? Yep. Uh, okay, perfect. So we'll get started. Um, so what is osteopenia and versus osteoporosis? So um, as you can see here on this slide, uh, we have our normal bone here. We have an osteopenic bone, which is in the middle, and then our osteoporotic bone here. So um, osteopenia um, is a loss of bone mineral density. Um, and it's usually between a one to two and a half standard deviations from a normal bone density. Um, if you have fewer minerals in your bone, um, you should be getting these types of scans done, which you'll likely um, find out through your doctor. Um, so osteopenia cannot, does not always develop into osteoporosis, but it can down the line, um, which uh, we'll get into more as we go along. And in osteoporosis, um, as you can see, you're more than two and a half standard deviations or less uh, from the normal. So what is osteoporosis? So osteoporosis is the deterioration of bone tissue and low bone mass, which can ultimately lead to an increased risk of bone fracture. Um, people with osteoporosis um, can typically have a reduced quality of life and lower self-esteem. And they can also have a loss of mobility. So osteoporosis can affect anyone at any age, but it's most likely seen in those 50 plus. Um, one in three male, well, sorry, one in three females and one in five males um, are typically those who are diagnosed with osteoporosis and are typically the population that um, we see, which is also over 2 million Canadians. So that's very um, alarming. Um, as well, just another point, um, it can affect any joint in the body. However, it most commonly affects our spine, our hips, our pelvis, and our wrist. And they're all significantly more than heart attack, stroke, and breast cancer combined. So osteoporosis is a major um, disease and it's quite a common disease. Um, 
there is a little bit of an alarming statistic that has come across as well. Um, those who suffer a hip fracture with osteoporosis typically pass away within the first um, year, and that's only about 28% of women and about 37% of males um, that would. So don't take hip fractures lightly. Um, if you have received one, please make sure that you get the proper care that you need. Um, and osteoporosis is often referred to as the silent thief, which we will get into um, later on in the slides. Okay, so it's a progressive disease that affects the bone's ability to reproduce bone tissue. Um, bone is constantly being broken down and replaced, and it occurs when uh, new bone production cannot keep up with the old bone loss. Um, when we're younger, uh, in our 20s and 30s, that's when we reach our peak bone mass and our peak bone uh, density. Um, but after the age of 30, um, our bone production does slow down, um, which ultimately will cause those weaker bones. So we're just going to go through what happens to the bone with osteoporosis. So there's um, two portions of the bone, two main components. So there's cortical bone, which is the outside of our bone. Okay, as you can see in both of these photos here. And with osteoporosis, the cortical bone, which is known as the hard bone, it actually thins. So it'll turn into this photo here on the left. Um, the thinning of the cortical bone actually diminishes our bone's ability to resist any kind of fracture that occurs. And the second part of the bone is the trabecular bone, which is the inside part of the bone, and it's also known as the spongy bone. Okay, so this with osteoporosis um, ultimately decreases the overall strength of the bone. So those are those two components there. Um, and if you have any questions along the way, just feel free to type them in the chat, okay? So common symptoms. Um, so typically there are no symptoms with osteoporosis. Um, majority of people that have osteoporosis don't know they have it until they either receive a fragility fracture or they've gone to their doctor and had a bone um, mineral density scan done specifically um, because they've likely asked for it uh, if someone in their family had had it. Um, but yes, that's why it's known as a silent thief because we generally don't know that we have it until we sustain a fragility fracture or we go and get a bone density scan done. Um, so um, what fragility fractures are, um, they are very spontaneous and they can occur um, from unexpected events, daily activity events that happen. Um, so such as reaching, bending, twisting, um, if you have osteoporosis, these kinds of movements can cause fragility fractures. Coughing and sneezing, sneezing believe it or not, can also cause um, fragility fractures as well. Um, they can also result from low trauma, sorry, low energy trauma. So this is falling from a low height. So a standing height, for example, we should be able to fall from a standing height without damaging our bones. Those with osteoporosis sometimes may receive fragility fractures from this and also um, from a walking speed or less. So whether you're falling while walking or even um, at that speed, that cadence that we have, um, it doesn't necessarily need to be while you're running. So some common symptoms, um, once bone has been weakened by osteoporosis, some symptoms can include back pain, lower back pain, upper back pain, depending on where majority of the osteoporosis is. Decreased height is another common symptom. Generally lose um, between one to three centimeters with osteoporosis. A stooped height, so we've gone from this lovely standing position to more of a crouched, bent over, leaning over position, which sometimes you may also need a walking aid for, and broken bones as mentioned previously. Hey, Diana, uh, we, we just have a, um, a question in the chat oh, from, yes. from Lynn. Uh, she asks, can you have osteoporosis in your spine but not your wrist or hip? 
Yeah, so from what I've understood from the research so far, it can affect certain parts of the body. Um, it doesn't affect, it doesn't have to affect all joints, but it can also affect all joints overall or all bones uh, per se. Perfect. All right, thank you. Thanks, Lynn, for that question. Um, so there's a few risk factors. We have unmodifiable risk factors, which are our age and our sex. So females tend to be more susceptible to um, osteoporosis than males and anyone over the age of 50 as well. Our body frame size. So those who have more of a petite build are more likely to have osteoporosis. Family history. Um, so Previous history of osteoporosis will make you more susceptible to um, getting it down the road. And also our uh, race, so Caucasian and Asian descent are also more likely to have osteoporosis or develop it down the road. And there are other um, osteoporosis risk factors which are modifiable. So these are things that we can change to help reduce our risk factor, um, help reduce getting osteoporosis. Um, so sedentary lifestyle, smoking, and excessive drinking. So these are all factors um, that we can change. We can go to our next poll there. <clears throat> okay, let's see if I can get this one right this time. <laughs> so we're gonna relaunch the poll. All right. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> All right, while we are uh, waiting for the poll results, uh, we have another question here. So oh. having surgery on knees, bunions, and a wrist carpal tunnel surgery, um, indications to osteoporosis. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm happy to answer that question because I had yeah, experience right with, ahead. with carpal tunnel. I, ha I had surgery. Uh, it, it wouldn't be an indication for that. Um, having surgery on the knees depends on what you're having surgery for. If it's... Uh, osteoarthritis uh, that's different than osteoporosis then um those would be those would be two two separate you you can have those concurrently but mm -hmm. uh having surgery on your knees for or and for bunions bunions is what we call hallux valgus uh that's usually from um the shape of your 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 your, your bone and your in your first toe starting to, to deviate and so, uh, so those would not necessarily be indications for osteoporosis, more from a wear and tear type thing. And then carpal tunnel would be from an entrapment of the median nerve through the carpal tunnel in the, in the wrist. So I hope, hope that answers your question. I'm gonna stop the poll here. I'm gonna share the results. So uh, there we go, okay. just the one question. So some people are taking vitamins. Lots of home exercises I see, and also some medications and injections. And a few people want to learn more too, so that's great. Mm. Excellent. Were there any more questions, I think? Just the one? Yeah, that was it. That was it. Okay. There's uh, one more question um, oh. from, from uh, somebody else. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll go ahead. Uh, and, and Joanne, if you're listening, I can, um, um, I, I can try to answer that uh, as, as Diane is presenting. Okay. I'll get you to take down the pool there whenever you get the chance. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Sure. There we go. All right. So um, treatment options for osteoporosis. So this is part of our osteoporosis management. Um, so the first treatment option, um, so you've gone to your doctor, you've likely had x-rays done, uh, bone mineral density scans done, and um, likely some blood work done. And they will, first line of action is to prescribe you likely um, some medication. So we'll go through some of the medica medication treatment options that are out there. So there, the first one are um, biophosphonates. These are anti-reasorptives. Um, and it's the, one of the most common families of drugs to treat osteoporosis. Um, there are four different ones that are currently on the market that are approved with the most common one being Fosamax. Um, so if you have osteoporosis, it's likely that you're going to be taking one of those. Um, then there's the Dinosumax. These ones treat um, the thinning of our bones. 
um, and um, they inhibit the osteoclast formation. And another um, common name for this one is prolia. There's two other um, treatment options available, which are which is hormone therapy, um, either estrogen or a combination of estrogen and progestin. And then there's also bone building medications as well. And some of these medications um, are also in an injection. Um, and usually they're only once a year that you would take the injection opposed to taking them daily. Um, so another way of managing our osteoporosis are through vitamins. So the two um, major vitamins we need to be having when we have osteoporosis are calcium and vitamin D. And these two are usually consumed um, together. So um, adults, between the ages of 19 and 50, we require about a thousand milligrams of calcium daily, which we can sometimes get already in our um, foods that we eat. However, if you are deficient and your doctor sees that you are deficient, that's when you would take a vitamin supplement. And anyone over the age of 50 um, would consume 1200 milligrams of calcium daily. And vitamin D, um, so between the ages of 19 and 50, we want to be taking between 400 and 1,000 international units daily. And those over the age of 50 or younger, depending if you're at high risk for osteoporosis or you've had multiple fractures over the years, um, this is where you would take an increased amount of vitamin D between 800 and 12, or sorry, and 2,000 international units daily. Okay, so nutrition. Um, so protein is also a very important um, uh, nutritional factor that we should take into consideration when we have osteoporosis. We need to be having adequate protein um, as it helps build stronger bones and our bone mass in combination with calcium. It will provide the best result for this and it is essential for our muscle mass to build good, um, healthy muscle. So increase protein, if we increase our protein intake, we will get increased muscle mass and increasing our muscle mass will be able to support our joints better, which will ultimately decrease our risks of future falls and fractures. So if we have enough support around our joints, we are less likely um, to fall. And when that happens, we will be less likely to receive a fracture. Lifestyle changes um, that we can do. So we can limit or decrease our alcohol consumption. Um, smoking cessation is a very um, big lifestyle change that is recommended as smoking actually decreases our bone mineral density as one as it is. Um, and then we also wanna prevent falls. So we are making sure we are getting proper ambulation. Um, if we need to use a cane, we are um, looking out for slippery areas. Also wearing proper footwear too, to prevent our falls. Diana, there's a, a couple questions in the chat. I, I answered one of them, but uh, we had a question from someone asking about our plant-based calcium pills as affect them as I'm assuming non-plant-based calcium pills. Uh, do, do you have any comments on that or? That's something I'll have to look into. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done too, too much research on the difference between the two. Um, mm -hmm. But if you leave, um, if you want um, to let me know, I would be able to reach out to you. Um, I'll see your name in the chat there and I'd be able to see yeah, some definitely. more information for you. Thanks for that, Diana. No problem. Um, and, and, and Jackie yeah. had mentioned working out twice a week with a personal trainer, kinesiologist. And you know that that's something that she looks for. She's saying that hopefully hoping this is helping her and, and assuming that exercise, as you had mentioned, is uh, one of the keys. And I guess you'll go into that a little bit more. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, we're gonna, we'll get to that part soon. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Yeah, yes. thanks for all the questions, everybody. Perfect. Okay, exercise, there we go. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> so um, exercise is beneficial at any starting point, regardless of your age. Ideally, you wanna be starting exercise at a younger age, because um, it just helps 
produce our bone um, cells and our, our, um, will help build our stronger bones. Um, it increases our bone cell production and it slows down our bone loss. The types of exercise that you're doing is also very important. So you wanna be doing weight bearing exercises um, and you also wanna be doing exercises that have a lot of balance and coordination in them as well. We'll get into more detail about those two later on. And for our final poll, Okay, all right, so. Okay, there we go. Right. Take a minute here to answer these and we'll get into some more exercises that we should be doing. <laughs> So, so yeah, one of the things I, I remember hearing at a, at a conference once um, discussing bone mineral density in um, you know men versus women and how important it was, and it was from a female orthopedic surgeon um, who had was discussing, you know, it, it's as Diane had mentioned, you know, starting early with exercise is so important. Uh, I, I think in certain generations, and 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 our and our listeners. Would probably attest to this. Certain generations, women were not encouraged to exercise uh, as young as young women, where where boys were encouraged to be rough and tumble and exercise, and um, and and that helps with bone mineral density. Uh, you, you know, falling, falling, and and learning to fall, uh, playing with, you, you know, um, sort of resistance type exercises is is super important. Um, you know, if, if being sedentary uh, is not so, so that that helps. I, I, I do recall that uh, being brought up. So encourage your your little girls to wrestle and, and be rough and tumble a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. I know I've encouraged mine too. So uh, I'm gonna end the poll here, Diana, and uh, share the results. Excellent. All right. Okay, good. So not too many people are limited with their functional activities. Um, are you currently participating in an exercise program? Yes, perfect. Some people are, which is great. And um, that third choice there. It's brought down here, sorry. No, that's okay. All right. Perfect. So I'm gonna stop sharing here. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. So OsteoPro. What is OsteoPro? So OsteoPro is a program that I've developed um, here at the clinic. It's um, education and exercise that we go through. So additional education to what you've learned this evening, um, as well as some core exercises that are um, essential and extremely beneficial for those who have osteoporosis. So education will go more into medication, um, spinal sparing, um, we also discuss best practice guidelines um, and lifestyle management and changes that would be optimal for someone with osteoporosis. So what is osteoporosis again? Um, so in the exercise portion, you're one-on-one -on -one with the registered kinesiologist, which is myself. Um, I've done additional training in osteoporosis management. I've been trained through um, bone fit, which is recognized through the osteoporosis um, osteoporosis Canada, sorry. Um, so we go through a thorough functional assessment. So we do, um, overall strength testing, testing, and then we also do functional assessments. So we see if you're able to get up off the floor, if you've had a fall, um, and other, um, functional abilities that you currently have and what your goals want to be. Diana, sorry to interrupt you, but just um, going back to that previous slide, we had a question from uh, from somebody. Uh, just just maybe can, if you can just highlight a little bit what is, what is spinal sparing? Yes, so we're doing spinal sparing is um, activities that we do that we have to limit in order to make sure that we don't put our spine at risk of fracture. So um, spinal, if we are going into excessive flexion, extension, rotation. These can all ha put our spine at risk of, of receiving a spinal fracture. Um, so we go into more in depth about how we can 
you know, prevent um, these fractures from occurring. Um, and um, sorry, and um, yes, prevent how we can prevent and limit these motions. I hope that answers your question. Thanks, Diana. Thanks. Um, so back here, yes, so we'll go through a thorough functional assessment. And then um, we go through exercise. So it is um, a four phase program that we go through. Um, spinal strengthening are very specific exercises that we do to help support our spinal column. Overall body strengthening, balance and coordination, falls prevention. And then it's also specific to your goals and what you wanna get most out of the program. Um, yes. So why choose osteopro? So um, it'll help reduce your risk of falls and future fractures by learning those spinal strengthening activities, or sorry, exercises, and also learning um, how to properly fall, how to catch yourself if you fall, how to reduce your fall through balance and coordination. Improving your overall strength, as I had mentioned earlier, good muscle support will support our bones, um, which will also support our bones if we fall, um, and it will help them um, not get fractured. Um, confidence, we want to increase your confidence as well. Sometimes it can be intimidating finding out that you've just been diagnosed with osteoporosis and you're not too sure what to do next, so, or if you can do certain activities. So we want to make sure that you're confident to go about your daily life life with, with no issue. And then we also want to help you achieve your goals. Okay. Do you have any questions? Yeah, so feel free. We've had some great questions so far. Uh, really, really um, astute questions. So if you have any other questions, uh, please type it into the chat, uh, raise your hand, or if you want the mic, I can I can give you the mic if you want to speak to Dana specifically, um, or if you have any questions regarding the, the program itself, the Osteo Pro program itself. Um, I, I think it's a fantastic program. As Diana mentioned, there's, you know, just, just having an, an ability to learn how to, um, um, you know, getting up off the ground. It sounds crazy, but but sometimes uh, that that's something that, that requires a little bit of uh, knowledge. And if you if you are knowledgeable about what you may have going on, uh, this this might help you. We have a question here in the chat. Um, how do you deal with uh, rotoscoliosis caused from osteoporosis? Um, yeah, so I think I received an email about this earlier today and I had actually had a conversation with Stephanie about it. Um, I am, I need to do a little bit more research into that, um, but it definitely depends on um, what's going on with your rotoscoliosis. Um, so I don't, I don't have an answer for you yet, but I will be able to reach out to you once I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for that question, Diana. We'll, we'll record the chat here after, and we'll make sure we get back to you uh, mm -hmm. on that. Um, and, and so we also had a question: um, How do I enroll into the the OsteoPro program, and and some costs, mm -hmm. and how long is the program? So those are those are three separate questions uh, from three separate attendees, mm -hmm. and um, and so so I'll, I'll let you. So that was how do how do we enroll? How long yes. is the program? And then what's the cost associated? Perfect, yeah. So um, to enroll, um, you just call your respective clinic. Um, closest to your house is probably the best option. Um, and you just let them know that, you know, you want to do the OsteoPro program. Um, they'll take down some information from you and they'll book you in um, to my schedule. So it's quite easy, not um, too much on that side. Um, it is one-on-one -on -one, though. Um, how long is it? So that actually depends on what your abilities are. So some people may have different lifestyle abilities that, you know, we can't do the whole phase of the program. It is um, four phases, about several weeks, I would say, at least probably around four to six weeks, um, depending if, um, if you want to do longer, you can. Um, and uh, Yes, yeah, so that's pretty much the duration of it. Um, we do start off about once a week. Um, we can increase to twice a week if you would like. 
Um, and we just basically build a repertoire of really good strengthening exercises, balance coordination exercises, um, also lots of education. There is so much educational material I have that I would be able to give to you about osteoporosis, um, as well as um, um, lifestyle changes and stuff that we can do towards it. Um, the cost of the program, so um, the initial assessment is $100. And then the treatments, there's two treatment options. We can do either an hour session together or we can do a half hour session together. That just depends um, what I see from our first session of how long I think our next sessions should be. Um, and they also can change. And the 30 minute session is 65 and then the hour session is 90. And, and just uh, I just answer a couple other questions. Uh, somebody asked about what the location of the program. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll provide that information in the uh, next couple of slides. Uh, so either in our Nobleton uh, location, Aurora location or Bradford. Um, and I think Diana, there was maybe somebody was doing something virtually as well. So you yes. had some, there was, a, there was a question about doing it virtually. So if you're, you know, if you're, if you're living, if you're living further north or, or, or further south or wherever it may be, you can, uh, if you have somebody you want to do this with, uh, you can, you can always tie in virtually. Um, uh, there's another question here. Bear with me, everyone. Thank you so much. It's a great question. I'm just getting to them. Uh, uh, home exercises, uh, Diana, somebody's asking about, uh, will there be home exercises? Provided? Yes. Yes. So, um, most of the exercises, especially the spinal strengthening exercises, they act, I need to teach you in person to do these, but there is a home exercise program that you'll work on each week. As you progress and get more comfortable with those exercises, we just add to your repertoire and they get more challenging. Um, but that's a good thing that they're getting more challenging because you are increasing your muscle strength in those areas. So um, there is a home program that you'll do with um, the in-person program as well. Um, if you are someone that, you know, isn't able to come into the clinic too often, we can definitely work on um, something that would be, you know, a more sustainable program for you to do at home, whether we touch base like bi-weekly or monthly, we can definitely figure out whatever option works best for you. And um, a question about, uh... Uh, somebody's asking here, having osteopenia in their hips and has managed to, to prevent it from turning into osteoporosis. Amazing. Uh, is there something else? Yeah. Is there something else that should be doing to stave off this disease? Um, pretty much any weight bearing activity is tolerated exercise. Um, you know, making sure that you are continually consuming those proper amounts of calcium and vitamin D and having a healthy nutrition. Um, those are all really great things that you can continue to do. I think weight bearing exercise though, is that main one that um, everyone should be doing. Mm -hmm. Great, okay. All right, thank you for the questions, everybody. They've been coming in uh, furiously here. Ho hopefully we're answering and getting back to everybody here with respect to their questions. Uh, once again, I, I apologize if, I, if I'm, I'm Previously, trying to type into the chat here, but uh, Diana is, of course, available beyond today yeah. um, to answer any questions personally, or even just pick up the phone and call her. Uh, we would say advice is free. Just, just pick her, pick up the phone, uh, give her a call, uh, schedule a time with her. Her, there's all the contact information, uh, mm -hmm. particularly down here at the bottom. Um, yes, my email's down here as well. So, if you easiest yes. way, easiest way, yeah, yeah, usually it's to reach me by email. Um, Dana, this is, this is an interesting question. Uh, sorry, uh, and, and, and I love this. I love that we're, this is probably the most, <laughs> the most questions we've had um, to our panel here. So, so somebody's, and these, none of these are silly questions, so I'll, I'll uh, say that first off, but um, is there a chance from having osteoporosis and then re regressing or actually improving, I guess, uh, to osteopenia? So, so bone mineral density increasing to the point where you change from those standard deviations um, where you, where you move back in the bell curve. Yes. So um, you can definitely improve your standard deviation from osteoporosis. Um, I think it depends how much you're actually doing to get into that osteopenic stage. Um, but I have seen um, through some research articles where people have actually 
through exercise been able to decrease the severity of their osteoporosis. They're still considered osteoporotic, but they're not high risk anymore. They're at a low risk of osteoporosis instead. So you can definitely decrease your risk level by increasing um, your T-score. So, um, so let's say you're at negative two standard deviations, you could be at negative 1.5 and that could definitely increase, um, um, increase or de sorry, decrease the level of risk that you have with osteoporosis. Thank you, Diana. Um, we're still available. We have uh, uh, more time left here. I think Diana's done most of the presentation here. We do um, still have our giveaway too, so. We do have our giveaway and, and yeah, it's, uh, Dan is going to talk about that, but I just, I just wanted to, um, and, and, and I'm fielding some more questions here. Um, and I will, um, just want to thank Diana, first of all, in case any of you are, um, well, stick around for the, for the, for the giveaway, but I want to thank Diana for the, the information and people have been thanking me in the chat here for all the information provided. It's, um, it, it's, it's a disease, a silent disease that, that nobody, nobody talks about because it's, um, you know, it doesn't have that cachet, you know, talk about osteoporosis, it's mm -hmm. nothing happens until something happens, right? Mm -hmm. You know, nobody knows they have it until it happens. And mm -hmm. when it does, it, it's pretty catastrophic. We see yes. this in clinic all the time where, where people have fractures and then go, I, I, I didn't know it was osteoporotic. And, um, and lo and behold, they, they are, which, which is not, again, maybe those things that don't always um, affect us in our, in our mortality rate, but, but knowing about, um, you know, the, the hip fractures and, and the mortality rate associated with uh, hip fractures is, is really important. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple more questions here. Um, let me just get through it. Oh, there's, there's quite a few. Okay. Uh, so so be, she's, question here, she has been watching and aware of osteoporosis for 20 years um, as her mother had it very bad and her BMD or bone mineral density uh, was only seeing osteopenia. And the next thing I know, I had eight, fractured vertebrae from gardening. Um, yeah. Yes, unfortunately that can happen. Yeah, th th those are things that sometimes, um, again, uh, not, not preventable in some ways, but um, you know, diagnostic imaging, as we always say, is not, not perfect, but uh, certainly if you have um, a knowledge about these things, then um, again, this is a great program to, to talk to Diana about. I think you know, you know, a lot of, a lot of physicians probably don't, don't have the time to spend, uh, you know, to, to assess these things with you and movement patterns. And, and this is where Diana's expertise comes in, where you can discuss these in detail Absolutely. about um, uh, preventing any type of deleterious effects. So um, I will, uh, th oh, thoughts on Aquafit. Um, what do you think? Aquafit's good. However, you do not have the weight bearing um, component that's needed for osteoporosis. And the reason means that when you're in water, gravity is taken away. Um, so gravity that's, you know, coming down on us as we stand normally, that helps create that weight bearing portion. So, um, also, um, Aquafit is really good for someone that might have osteoarthritis and can't handle being, you know, on the weight on a weight bearing position because it's hurting their joints. But in terms of osteoporosis itself, we do need to have that weight bearing component. Perfect, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, um, great. Uh, Diana, let, let's, um, you know, everybody congratulating on a great web, on a great webinar here. So thank, thank you very much. Let, let's get, <laughs> Thanks, to, let's get to the giveaway here. Um, okay, yeah, just giveaway wanna, time. Yeah, let's just just if you if you are interested in um, yeah, Eric is clapping silently. I can give you the I can give you the mic. Uh, but if you're interested in any more information, just type into the yeah. chat um, so we know specifically. Just put info in the chat. Diana will get back to you within mm -hmm. a few days. Or um, the the webinar is, is is available. It'll be available in the next probably in the next week or so. We're going to try to get it out on the weekend. Um, and, and so you can you can grab the information. Uh, Dan, just just one last question. Uh, just just really brief about what what exactly with the Osteo Pro uh, program are you assessing? Yes, so I'm I'm assessing your functional ability specifically. So seeing how, like I do do a strength and like a you know a bit of a neural assessment just to rule out any other 
issues that may be going on, but I, I want to see how you're moving. So cardiovascular balance, coordination, your strength, those are all things that we primarily assess first flexibility. And then from there, um, all these, um, assessments are scaled. Um, so we create a baseline. I see where you are and we want to try and move you up on that. So I, through the functional assessment, um, I'll get some normative data and then we'll just do our best to create a program that will help increase, um, increase your ability to do certain activities, depending to it's like, if you want something that's more cardiovascular, we would assess more cardiovascular, but, um, if you are looking for more strength or flexibility, coordination, balance, we also do that as well. It's pretty tailored to, uh, what people like. Yeah. It's specific for what you would like out of the program. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Without further ado, um, we will, uh, do Giveaway. We'll do the giveaway. Yes. So um, the promotion that we have going on right now. So um, anyone who signs up for the Osteo Pro program within the next two weeks. Um, so by the second week of April, um, you'll actually get your bands for your exercise equipment free of charge. Um, there will be no um, cost for those. So um, do your best to sign up if you'd like. Um, we'd be happy to um, include those bands there for you as well. Um, and I'd be happy to be working with you too um, to help manage your osteoporosis. Great. Yes, and you can type in bands too in the chat here if you're really interested in it. I can also reach out to you that way as well if you want some more information. So um, feel free to do so. <clears throat> and thank you very much. Um, I want to thank everybody for participating tonight. Uh, Oh, uh, we have a raised hand here. Sorry, I'm, I'm uh, Judy. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer your question here uh, in the chat. So, or, or um, just just one second. But uh, just wanted to thank thank Diana for uh, a very informative presentation. It was wonderful. Um, once again, just just feel free to reach out to her on um, uh, email or phone call, and she'll schedule some time to talk to you specifically. Um, and um, I think I think that's it for now. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, and again, if you do have any questions, um, feel free to email me. Um, my email is down here below, um, or also you can call one of the clinics and I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. Great. Perfect. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna be signing off. So thank you very much everybody you. for participating. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right.